Have you lost your job? Have you lost a loved one? Are you exhausted caring for your parents, for your kids? Well, you can find immediate relief when you read Sheila Mack's new number one bestseller, Bootstraps and Bra Straps. It contains the boots formula to move from rock bottom back into action in any situation, especially right now. The life has knocked you down. Pick yourself up with bootstraps and bra straps. Get your copy at www.sheilamack.com today. Are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio, Mondays at 1 and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Pacific Time. If you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's Sheila. Are you ready for a reboot? Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. History reminds us those hit hardest often become the change makers. This year, we've all hit crazy economic, social, and emotional rock bottoms. We all get knocked down. Something hits globally, locally, personally. It affects our health, finances, our relationships. We have to recreate a business or career. Each show, Sheila and her special guest will be sharing their reboot stories, guiding you with real solutions to upgrade and up-level emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, and financially. Here on NBC's KCAA Radio, Mondays at 1 and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Pacific Time. If you're ready to pull yourself up by the bootstraps and bra straps, enjoy a listen. Here's Sheila. Welcome to the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you reinvent, rebuild, and reboot your life on your terms. I'm Sheila Mack, your host, and today we have Dr. Kian Vu. He is one of the most sought after anti-aging physicians in the country. He's taking care of me. I got to talk to you, Dr. Kian. And his Vu MD Longevity and Performance Clinic, Dr. Vu regularly works with celebrities, top corporate executives, and high functioning professionals to optimize their health, performance, and vitality. He's also a health media personality, appearing on national TV shows such as The Doctors and Access Hollywood, and he helps to train the next generation of physicians to assist professors of, wait, to assist, train, and Wait a minute, I've lost my place. To assist <laughs> professor of health sciences at UCLA. As someone who has overcome two chronic diseases himself and now he lives happier, stronger and healthier than ever before, Dr. Vu is passionate about empowering people to reclaim their health and live with fulfillment, abundance and purpose. All right, welcome to the show, Dr. Ken. How Gina, are you? Great to be on the show. Thanks for inviting me. Yes, happy to have you. And this show is based on my new bestseller, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. And this year, we have had every situation hit us. Yes. <laughs> so I would love, yes, I would love to start the show with a share about maybe a, a tough situation you had to overcome in your business or personal life and how you got back on track. Well, that's a great question because I did exactly just that um, uh, earlier this year. It was, um, you know, if, if people didn't know about last year, I had sold my house and, you know, I downsized a lot and I moved into uh, a neighborhood that, you know, we had an old house, my parents' home. And it's really in a neighborhood that is flanked by 
two um, two liquor stores at the end of the block. There's security bars all over the house in a neighborhood that's not so nice. You know, the the, the prior year I was living um, in a house in Silver Lake where I had views of the Silver Lake Reservoir, the Griffith Observatory, and the Hollywood sign. Mm -hmm. And when COVID hit, my partner she lost her um, she lost her ability to gain any money. So her and her um, six-year-old daughter at the time moved in with me. And here I am thinking, I'm about to start this new family. We also then discovered that she was pregnant with my daughter coming up. Oh, and here goodness. I am thinking, I've got all these um, people coming into my life and that I'd like to provide. And then COVID hit. It took I took a huge hit in my business, my investments, and the bank accounts just went, you know, it, it really sank. And for a while, I was thinking, why is this happening? And I was looking, looking around, looking out through my doors with the security bars. And I'm thinking, how is this thriving? I'm, I'm, I'm writing this book. I'm about to release my book, Thrive State, coming out in April of next year. How is this thriving? And, you know, a magic happened the day they actually moved in when her six-year-old daughter came into the house. They've never, she never had her own house before. She comes in, we had designed a nice little bedroom for her with a princess canopy in her bed. She's up jumping on top of her bed because she's never had her own room before. We have a small little yard that's full of weeds, but she's just running around because she's never had a yard before. I mean, to her, the place could have been like Disneyland. And then that really just gave me the gift of knowing what COVID is doing for a lot of people. I mean, it's, it's a very tough time, but if we could recognize that our emotional states do not have to be predicated on what's in our bank account or the different circumstances that are going on in the world. And we could really master those emotional states, knowing that no matter what's happening around us, we always have access to joy, to love, to gratitude, and those emotions. And once we recognize we have that power, then truly we've got all the success and wealth that we want. And certainly we know that the economy has picked back up and business is now popping again and, and, and everything is all well. Um, so that's a challenge I've been through, but I, I really think that this is a gift that, that we all needed to be able to slow down, to be able to recognize how re resilient we really all are. Yes. Wow. Well, that's it. I'm, congratulations. I didn't know the little secrets. I haven't. We I haven't know. In a long <laughs> <laughs> we have yet to announce it. I actually uh, just asked her to, to marry me this past weekend. We oh. haven't announced it just yet. So we're going to wait for the election to be over and, and for all that fiasco. We'll make our announcement then. Well, years ago, I, I helped plan many weddings. So you just let me know. I'm happy to help out. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, I would love to hear about what you're doing with, with wellness and mm -hmm you know, for those celebrities and, and everybody else, um, maybe we're not a celebrity, but we are a celebrity in our own homes for sure. And so how, what suggestions do you have for us to stay well and, and fit during this very interesting time? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm going to preface this by telling you what kind of doctor I was trained at. So, um, I was trained as an interventional radiologist. And for those people who don't know, an interventional radiologist is a minimally invasive surgeon that uses imaging to perform um, minimally invasive surgeries. And I've treated the consequences of a lot of chronic diseases, including cancer, diabetes, uh, heart disease. Um, and I did all these uh, procedures on people who you know, had disease for a really long time, people who were about to lose their leg and I had to open up the arteries in their leg, people that had a growing tumor in their liver that I had to shrink down by giving chemotherapy. Mm. So I was trained in the best institution, UC San Diego, UCLA, and now, now I also teach at UCLA. Uh, but about four years ago, I find myself overweight, diabetic, had high pl blood pressure, and I was on several prescription medications. And uh, here's this doctor who was giving medical advice who had disease myself. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I recognized that I wasn't really conscious about how I was living my life. I wasn't really conscious about the emotions that, that I was taking through and all the stress that I was going under you know, to, to be able to be this doctor that uh, I neglected my relationships and I neglected, you know, what I known to be healthy habits. And I, I started to become a chronic disease statistic. And as we know, uh, Sheila, uh, one in two American has a chronic disease, one in four have multiple chronic diseases. And that number is just going to skyrocket. Mm -hmm. 
Right. And it wasn't until I started to pause and I turned turn those things around by becoming a little bit more conscious about how I was living my life. And as I did that, I not only reversed all my chronic diseases in a matter of four to six months, but I, I look better, I feel better, and I am just, uh, I've got this zest for life now, and I wanna share that with other people. And a lot of people that I work with now, the uh, corporate CEOs, celebrities, go through a very similar process because you know, I feel, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with this one quote where the Dalai Lama was asked what he found most interesting about humanity. He said, man, because he would sacrifice his health in order to make money and then sacrifice his money in order to recuperate his health. Mm -hmm. and my, my clients felt the same way. You know, we, we've, we've got this idea that success means X, Y, or Z. It might be our bank account. It might be fame. It might be some level of significance. And we chase that. And and if we're chasing that from a place of I'm not enough and I'm not worthy, they might be adopting habits just like myself, just like a few years ago when I had chronic disease. And really, I'm so passionate about what I'm doing now because I recognize that not only do people not need chronic disease, but on the other side of that, once you become a little bit more conscious about how you live your life and your health, then you've got the mental, physical, and emotional, and sexual performance that a lot of these people want. And so uh, long-winded question, uh, long-winded answer to your question, but how I, how I help people is start to break down seven things we could talk about in detail, seven things in their life that they can start to become a little bit more conscious of and make those changes. And as they do, they'll recognize that their health and their physical performance and how they look and how they feel start to transform very rapidly. Hmm. Okay. So what are some of those steps? So, um, you know, what's the difference between performance and having, you know, chronic disease is the state of our cells. I call that the bioenergetic state, just mm -hmm. like you or me. If we're in a happy state, if we're in a beautiful state, we're in a good mood, we think different, we move different, how we show up in the world is different. This is very same with our cells. Our cells have the state. And if we're in what we call thrive state, which is the title of my book, our cells are performing better, they're, they're aging better, they're communicating with the whole body in a very organized way. If the cells are not performing well, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, then that's when you, know, you start to feel like crap and that le eventually leads to chronic disease. So it's really to master that energetic state. Now, basically every, our cells are constantly interacting with its environment and there are tons of things that our cells are constantly interacting with, but there are seven main things seven main things that you and I can control to master our bioenergetic state. And that's sleep, nutrition, movement, stress and emotional mastery, our thought and mindset, mm -hmm. relationships, and then having a sense of purpose. If we can master those seven things, we're really putting an environment in our cells into what I call the thrive state. And that's when our cells live a long time. That's when our immune system's at its best. And that's when we perform at our best. I love that. That That is beautiful and it's very true. Uh, I've talked to so many people and seen it myself that people that have had chronic illness, uh, they've been on medications and the medications have other complications that make mm -hmm. them other ways and all of a sudden when they start doing lifestyle redesign and they change their habits slowly and surely they're able to finally get off medications with their doctor's help and advice and when it's the right time and it goes pretty quick like you said four to six months and you mm -hmm. were back on track better than ever yeah and you didn't have to take all those medicines anymore you know and it's, it's just mm -hmm. one of those things that that happens and it's it's gradual and the other side of that is it's very gradual that the unhealthiness can sort of seep in i think like this year especially mm -hmm. everybody's got the covid 20 or <laughs> the stress the cortisol happened and you, you know people didn't go to the gyms maybe they were afraid to take a walk if they're in a busy city and so mm -hmm. they were at home and then the, the depression or anxiety kicked in and so then the fridge was really close to the couch <laughs> you bring about a very good point uh sheila you know once all those things you mentioned were, were exactly a part of those seven things so you'll recognize something they're all energetically tied together you know so 
that once one piece falls off the chain, it's very easy for everything to snowball down the other way. You know, you start losing connection and relationships. You're not feeling very good. And then, you, you know, it's very easy to reach for that thing that you wouldn't normally reach for or have or have that willpower. That's going to make you feel like crap. You're not going to be able to sleep, which then lowers your energy some more. So you're not exercising. But, very, but here's the good news. On the flip side of that, here's the thing is once you understand what you need to do and all those seven things, you, you also understand that if you were to start to make a small change the other way, that's going to drive momentum to stack change so that you know, you know, you have this positive level of, of, of improvement as well. So the number one thing is one, identify what side of the spectrum are you? Are you in the thrive state or are you in the stress and survive state? Mm -hmm. And I think cortisol, that stre the stress hormone mm -hmm. is the hardest on people. It, it reduces your ability to mm -hmm. process things and um, your metabolism, everything slows. And it's, mm -hmm. it's interesting how that happens. But this year we have had more stress than ever. So I did want to share something really important. I am the spokesperson sort of <laughs> for, for the 211. Have you heard of 211, Ken? No, I have not, Sheila. Okay. So the 211. Remember back in the day when we used to dial 411? Yes. Information? Okay. This was this is dating us. Okay. This is like, okay, how old are we? We won't tell. But I think I know what 211 is now, now that you've mentioned it, but I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll let you talk about that. Yeah. So the 211 is a place where you can go in the United States and in any state that you're in, you dial 211 or you Google 211 and your state and you will actually find a list of resources. So maybe you lost your job and the COBRA cut off or you couldn't pay that ridiculous health insurance um, fee. And so you need to get health insurance in between years. Or maybe you need to get to a food bank for your family. Maybe you need to get some mental health resources or other resources, help with rent, or if you're a landlord, help with, with your mortgage, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of thing that's where you go. And it's a wonderful thing to be able to share. It's simple. You can have a listening ear for a friend, but you can't do everything for everyone. So to be able to give somebody a resource and answers that they do not have so that they can get the stress out of survival, out of flight and fight, and, and then they reduce their cortisol, they can mm -hmm. get back on track, file, follow the healthy programs. And that's really going to help and make a difference. So make sure to keep 211 in your mind to share with family and friends who may never have had to ask for a resource or help before. Because that's this, a really great resource. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> yes. So, so other suggestions. I mean, I know that I I had a loss this year. You know, my my youngest son passed away in December. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I mean, I had sleep issues. I had I had to get through a lot of things. It was really hard. Where do you start um, when you when when you when you've spiraled out? Which do you pick one that's easiest for you, or or what do you suggest for starting to get back on track with that? Yeah, I think that's a great question, and it is different for everybody. But there are some general rules that I think uh, would help a lot of people. Number one. You know, when you have that list of seven things that I just mentioned, it's always great to just list down everything that you could possibly do uh, to get better. The problem is when you have a large list, it makes things very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I, what I have people do is just exactly like you said, the first step is the easiest step. So whatever is not going to require a lot of activation energy for you to do is, you know, if, if, if it's a matter of waking up and, and getting uh, sunlight the first thing in the morning to help with your sleep and reset your circadian rhythm. That should be, you know, the first thing to do. If it's a matter of, you know, ditching out all the sugars in your life, then if that's the easiest thing to do, do that. So whatever those, you know, I, I lead people through these seven things and everybody's going to have their own recipe as to the different things they could try. Choose right. the easiest things first, because when you do, you'll recognize those positive changes doing those easiest, easier thing. You're going to feel better. And it's, going to be even easier to adapt that next thing. Mm -hmm. But what, what I do find, uh, particularly in states like this, particularly in states where people are going through a lot of stress and trauma, that, you know, that relationship component is very, very important. You know, I think if you can tap into your community, you know, particularly in, in a state where there is social distancing, 
it doesn't have to, you know, I don't like the word distancing. I, we should really say physical distancing and not really social distancing because we are social creatures. We do, you know, you and I on the phone right now, even though we're not physically next to each other, we're releasing oxytocin because we're feeling the bond and love we're forming with each other. And that's so important to calm our minds, bring down our blood pressure, improve our gut. So having that community, having that support community, whether or not you're able to physically be together uh, is going to be key. And, you know, just re reminding yourself um, that, you know, our minds, our bodies, and our emotions are all energetically tied together. So, you know, if we're feeling down, if our emotions are feeling down, if we could do things to nourish our bodies, um, that's, that's number one, a great hack. Move your body around, exercise, mm -hmm. do that. Uh, but the other component, because they're all energetically tied together, is our mind. If we could just start to refocus, and I know I know it could be difficult, but if you move your body, you start to feel a little bit better. You can start, then start to say, "Well, what am I focusing on right now? Is what I'm focusing on creating how I'm feeling?" And, and usually that's the case because usually we don't have real danger coming at us, right? A, a saber tooth tiger is not coming at you. Yes, there's COVID going on, but we can shift the way we perceive the world, shift the way we focus, so that we start to feel a little different, and if we could you know, start the snowball process of just doing things to make us feel a little bit better, whether it be, you know, call a friend, whether it be working out, all those things that can shift us into these these more positive emotional states. Uh, those are the things that I find uh, most helpful for people who just need to start right away. Yes. And I know one of the things I've found is that when you maybe you don't have somebody to connect to, but if you're able to help in community and get involved with something you care about, even if there is this social distance, you're you're able to help with a support helpline or or something like that, or help with the Humane Society if you love pets or whatever, however you can get into contribution when you're helping others, it's almost like, you know, like Tony Robbins, our favorite, yep. says get out of your head and into your heart. And when you're serving others, you forget about your own stuff. And then you go home and you're like, oh, I wasn't alone anymore. And I didn't have time to like, you know, stress eat or, smoke or drink or whatever the habit is that you want to break and, yep. and then start to heal and and you're helping others as you're healing yourself and that's that's a fun place that you're also involved with something you're really passionate about i help with with girls homes and i go in and mentor young girls that are emancipating from foster care i've been doing that for many years i adopted three children in addition to my own and so that's something that's that's my heart and something i've always done and so it just it just really makes a difference when when you're able to do that. And there is no shame if you need to ask for help and get help when you need it as mm -hmm. well. If that means, you know, all of us, we went through grief, grief counseling as a family because that's we needed that. And I, I told all my kids, hey, we're going to be OK to yell, cry, scream, hit the punching bag. I bought a punching bag <laughs> and to get through emotions as well, instead of keeping them inside when we keep emotions inside. It doesn't mean we're going to go, you know, punch a person. We're going to punch a punching bag or, mm -hmm. or discuss things. But that gets it out, because I think mm -hmm. when inside, that's when the disease happens, because we're, we're we have all these emotions stuck. Yeah, that's, that's that really is. And that's the cortisol and the stress. And then you can't, you're, you're dieting and you're doing all these healthy things and you're stuck and you're like, what in the heck is going on? I'm well, the hell with it. I'll just have some candy <laughs> or whatever. And yep. it's, it's the stress that has to come away and first mm -hmm. and getting those emotions out in order to that. And then you can sleep better. I mean, yep. I, that I beat that um, punching bag up a few times and I had a good night's sleep. <laughs> <laughs> You bring a lot of good points. What what you just said there, you know, we do mention. You mentioned, you know, helping out and volunteering. You know, mm -hmm. the, the the seventh thing uh, to get into the thrive state is purpose. And and what is purpose? Purpose is really, you know, I I break it down very easily. Some people are out there like trying to figure out what their purpose is, including myself, a little while ago, because we were like, hey, we got to find our purpose. But you know, purpose is really just doing the things that bring us. Uh, into those positive states of joy, of gratitude, whatever th makes us feel good, and then serving others for, with that. That's what purpose really is. is it's really just serving um, our most authentic selves. You know, our your purpose is you, really. Um, but and if you could to give you to the world, that's really what it is. And um, 
you know, we know what drives a lot of depression. If you're focused on yourself, you start to focus on all those things that are in your life that drives, you know, these these negative emotional states. And this is what I love, you, you know, uh, you bring up the cortisol thing. So, you know, scientifically, let, let me tell you what, what happens with cortisol, right? So cortisol is the hormone that's released when you are under stressed. And it's exact, exactly the same hormone that's released when you are trying to run away from a saber-toothed tiger. And it has physiological changes. So when you're running away from the saber-toothed tiger, guess what happens? All the blood is diverted into your skeletal muscles, so nothing's you know, diverted to your, to your bowel so that you could digest very well because you need to run. Yeah. Your blood starts to thicken. Why? Because if you get a big flesh wound, um, your blood has to be able to stop the bleeding. So your circulation is not very good. Uh, your digestion, uh, like I said, is not very good because you're not going to eat when you need to run away. Mm -hmm. uh, and then finally, you know, who needs an immune system? Because if you're going to be eaten up, I need my energy to be diverted there. So, you know, with cortisol, what happens is inflammation will start to rise and inflammation is really the core cause of a lot of chronic disease. And then your immune system drops. And the combination of those two things will cause chronic diseases to happen, such as cancer, such as diabetes, such as autoimmune conditions. So you bring a very, very good uh, example because cortisol is is real. You know, it's good if you're running from a saber tooth tiger. It's not supposed to be happening. Um, you know, you know, uh, most times of the day. So uh, it's so important. And on the flip side of that, that is, you know, the emotions of stress drives chronic disease, but the emotions of joy and emotions of gratitude, the emotions of connection, all those positive emotions do the opposite. They lead to healing. They lead to improved immunity. It leads to decreases in blood pressure and, and, and better performance. You know, a lot of people come to me because they, they want to improve their sexual performance. They're like, why is my sex drive down? You know, mm. um, and <laughs> really tapping into these other things yes. will, will get them into, uh, into more positive uh, performance states. Very important. <laughs> the seventh human need. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So yes, that's very true. And it all, I think it's like our whole person, like you're, you're coming, you're, you're sharing about this thrive state from a place of the whole person. Mm -hmm. You need to sleep. You need to take care of your wellness relationships. It's all, all connected to how the the wellness shows up or doesn't show up and it seems like it's a slow like we thought two weeks we're going to be in lockdown and now here we are going through this pandemic still and and back and forth with whatever social distancing laws and it's been a while and so all of a sudden we're looking in the mirror and we're like wait what the hell happened <laughs> yeah. back on track now and so it's okay to don't expect that this is going to work in one day. It took six, seven months. I don't know how many months I've lost track of uh, mm -hmm. so many months um, to get to a point where maybe even though we need to be even more boost our immunity more, mm -hmm. more focused on wellness where we kind of lost it for a minute there. <laughs> and so it is something that's a gradual step love yourself through it forgive yourself it's not you don't need to beat yourself up because that's going to raise the, the cortisol again yep. <laughs> Believe yep. it or yeah. not. so it, no, you, know, you got to be kind to ourselves for yeah. sure and say hey you know what but now today's a new day and, and you know you could start new year's forget those new year's resolutions start it today by new year's you'll be just back on track mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so that's it and you mentioned you are expecting a little one soon and you now mm -hmm. have a, a daughter as well i believe and so with mm -hmm. that what suggestions do you have for parents listening in to help their young children or possibly teens to thrive with wellness as well you know, I mentioned those seven things, um, and I think you know everybody should should be aware of where they are, you know, in in all those seven things to be able to thrive. But I, what I find uh, to be um, so important is to 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 lead by example. I mean, this is these are stressful times, and children could really feel that energy, mm -hmm. and that energy is past. You know, not only children. Look, you know, the energy we put out to the world is 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 how the world receives us. But children are very very sensitive to that. So 
what what I do um, mention is that the stress that we we have on ourselves. Yes, we need an outlet, but you know we could show our children that we you know we're we are in a space of love still. That we you know that you know they don't know how the world is, is supposed to be really. I mean, we could change change this and we could change our stories. So I mean, we're playing a lot of uh, games at home. You know, my my bonus daughter uh, recently got this card game called Sushi Go, and I find myself playing my playing it with her uh, every day. So I think as parents, uh, it could be very easy to fall off the tracks and, and, and to eat bad food and not sleep and not not stay in your wellness plan, but mm -hmm. stay the course, recognize that this is a time that's going to pass. And this is really allowing us to reflect on how our lives probably were before and gives us an opportunity to, to uh, ask ourselves, what are the real changes we want to make so that we can become who we want to be, not only once this thing is over, but you know who, who we want to be 10 years from now, 20 years from now. It gives us a time to pause, reflect, and show up how we want it, uh, to show up in the world. Yes. And I, I think about, you know, when you think about if you're in a workplace, there's that one coworker or one employee that walks in and the whole energy is like, oh no, mm. so and so. We gotta mm. hear the stories and we got and we gotta yep. deal with that person. And the same is true when the person with the positive energy walks in and it changes everybody's emotional state in the mm -hmm. room and the environment. Yep. So whether you are the leader of your company, leader of your home, or you just started a job yesterday, you mm -hmm. are the leader when you bring the right energy to the environment you're in and children will will learn from our examples for sure and they feel that so years ago i was a teacher and like i have six kids i i adopted three three are mine they're all grown but if i had some energy that wasn't so good it would show up on all the kids would be fighting if i was fighting or whatever it was mm -hmm. it shows up so so how we lead makes a difference in our communities, yeah. in our homes. And right now in our world, we need so much healing with everything going on. And it really starts from home. Mm -hmm. And we, we really, you know, you nailed it right on the head is we have a choice. We have a choice on how we show up in the world. And uh, this brings me, you know, to a very, you know, touching story that I had with a patient, you know, uh, when, when I was going through my own, my, my transformation, I was this obese guy and, and I recently had surgery and the person I was dating at, at the time left me for another, another man. I was pretty depressed and I was doing a small surgery uh, to, with this 40 year old man with pancreatic cancer. And he had this really distended abdomen full of fluid with, with tumor cells. So I needed to relieve it. And here I was looking at the chart thinking I'm going to walk into a room to this really depressed person and I walk in and oh my God, the energy that was put out by this, this guy, he was like, Hey doc, how are you? And I found it just so amazing um, how he's able to, you know, uh, you know, spread that kind of energy uh, given his circumstances. And I asked him how he's able to do that. And he told me, you know, doc is really simple. Mm. I get to choose how I show up in the world. And I, I, I choose to spread love, to spread joy. And man, I felt it. And after that incident, I recognize that no matter what's happening in life, no matter what life circumstances, we always have a choice. We always have a choice in, in whether or not we stay up late at night, whether or not we, we reach for the bad food, whether or not we, we, we focus and dwell in our negative emotions, or we get to get past that. Um, it is a little bit hard, uh, initially, but once we quiet our minds and I'm, you know, we can go over a little technique in terms of what I tell my clients to do, but once we can quiet our minds and recognize that we really do have a choice in how we show up, uh, that changes everything. Yes. And it does. It, it, it's also very healing when you're going through a medical situation, mm -hmm. um, you're able to take charge of the you know, the food as your medicine and your activities, little things. If you can't even walk around, even if you're stuck in bed, you can do breathing exercises, mm -hmm. small. And all of a sudden you're on a healing journey and it's going to make all the difference in how fast you can recover when, when you're doing that. And of course you're going to listen to your doctor and do that as well. But going through taking, 
as much responsibility as you can for your mm -hmm. own wellness is going to make all the difference. And, and it does, you know, I have an, an anecdotal story. I mean, I'm not telling, not telling people that, you know, just, just gratitude and things like that will, will, will heal them. But I was dealing with a liver cancer patient, you know, I'm going to, you know, change his name up. His name was Todd. Uh, and I was treating his, his liver tumor for, for quite some time. Uh, and I recognize every time I put chemotherapy in there, it would stop growing for a little while and it would grow again. It would stop growing for a little while and grow again. So I did probably, you know, five to seven procedures on him and he wasn't sure how long he was going to have. Mm. And, uh, so he did one thing. He, he, he then, you know, he was estranged with his brothers, uh, growing up and he wrote letters to all his brothers. Uh, telling him that I don't know how much more time I have. I'd like to repair the relationship I have with you. I, I, you know, there's, life is too short to to carry anger and, and and fear between us, and that I'd like to open up those, you know, that that relationship. And after he was able to heal those relationships, uh, he's been I think seven years out now, tumor free. I mean, I treated him every couple of months for for a while. And he said after he did that, it never came back and it still hasn't come back yet. Wow. So um, there is the power of, of, of relationships and for carrying those negative e emotions. You know, we need to, you know, we need to be able to heal and forgive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what I would like to, you know, say, you know, because I have treated a lot of patients with cancer is, you know, uh, the, the emotions of worry, of fear, of, of, constantly anticipating the worst yeah. creates that cortisol mm -hmm. and like i said disease happens you know when you have a balance you know an imbalance of your immune system being able to protect you against cancers and infections and then increased inflammation and that's what it exactly does when you're in fear is you you bring up your inflammation you decrease your immunity and you change your resources in your body your energetic resources to those processes of inflammation and, 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 you know, say things weren't working well, well, you just added another big load to, to your, to your process. So yeah. as much as you can, as, as hard as your diagnosis is, um, recognize that if you can, you know, if you can, if you can start to believe in the power of shifting your emotional states, uh, you know, you give yourself the best chance. I love that. And it's so true. Uh, I've seen that so many studies, the mindset of a patient really has a lot to do with their recovery process. Yeah. Yes. For sure. Yes. So I'd love um, for you to share about how people can work with you um, and what what options they have if they they're looking to get reach a doctor maybe that can help them. Mm hmm. Yeah, so I uh, run a concierge practice, and I work with very few patients. Uh, but if they, you know, I, I'll try to work with as many people in my capacity. Uh, so I do have a very limited amount of, of personal patients. But if they go to my website, kienvu k i e n v u u uh, dot com, uh, if you ch click on the VU MD clinic, you can fill out an application to work with me. What I am excited about because I want to help more people is uh, in a couple of months I'll be launching a uh, a group course where uh, you know we, we go through all the seven things and people's going to build their own blueprint uh, so that they could reach the thrive state and we'll be doing that in a group setting and that's a that's a way for me to be able to to expand the amount of people I can help. That's wonderful. All right. Well, that sounds so good. And what's going to happen is I will definitely share again. And you're welcome to come back on the show when, when you're ready to share about that course or when your book is out and you're ready to share about that. So we will keep listeners informed so that they can live their best life in the Thrive State. All right. So thank you again, um, Dr. Vu, for being on the show. And we will be back after these messages. All right. Stay tuned. If you are just tuning in, this is the Sheila Mack Show, reality at its finest. Here we have real people sharing real stories and actionable steps to help you rebuild, reinvent, and reboot your business and personal life on your terms. 
I'm your host, Sheila Mack, and we are here today on NBC's KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. Today, we are focusing on how to get back on track and reboot this year as we actually heading into the holidays and our new year. And many of our states and globally, actually, (laughs) countries are starting to go back onto lockdown. So with that in mind, this is an interesting and possibly difficult season for some of our family, friends, and loved ones who may never have ever had a tough situation like this year. So keep this number 211 in mind. This is something that you can Google 211 and your state and you will find resources that um, that each state provides and province in Canada. 211 makes it easy to find food, housing, job training, after school programs and so much more. And the most important thing is that I would say 60% of the people I've surveyed have never heard of this valuable resource. So if you're, if you have um, a place of work, you're still going to ask if they can post this. A lot of times people don't really ask for help when they need it, but if they see a sign like this, they, they're more likely to, to go to a public health agency or help agency to get help getting meals on the table, help with transportation, income assistance, utility assistance, help with housing, health care, mental health, which which is so important, especially this year. And it actually makes work a lot easier. If you are just tuning in, this is the Sheila Mack Show here on NBC's KCAA Radio, the station that leaves no listener behind. I am so proud of my friend, Dr. Vu, for launching his new book, Thrive Stay, available as of April 6th. In a time where we have a country divided by hate crimes and fear, by uncertainty around the pandemic, you'll learn about Dr. V's personal story as a boat refugee to America who overcame racism to become a successful doctor, only then to develop several chronic diseases. You'll also learn that the root of his disease stemmed from feelings of stress and unworthiness. You'll not only discover the remarkable story of how he healed from his chronic disease, but how he is currently thriving in all areas of life. In his quest for health, he has synthesized the knowledge from ancient wisdom and the new science of epigenetics, biohacking, and anti-aging medicine. In Thrive State, Dr. V shares a simple yet practical framework for thriving as a human being. In this critical time, Thrive State offers an empowering message that we are our best medicine. Dr. V envisions a world where humans embrace a standard of health that enables us to be happier, live longer and more fully and contribute our gifts to humanity. He believes in the medicine of love, community and laughter. By the time you finish Thrive State, you will be armed with a wealth of new practical knowledge about your health and wellness, a roadmap for great well-being, and a more optimistic outlook on our human potential. Please support by buying a copy of Thrive State at thrivestatebook.com and sharing this empowering message of hope and love with your friends and family. Um, when your co-workers have their needs met, obviously, it may be that they're a two-income family and even though they're working one job, they still aren't making ends meet this year. So this is really important to share. Even if you don't need it yourself, keep it in mind for a family, friends, loved ones, someone you find in the community that may need resources. I think, obviously, prayer works, blessings work, helping people, a listening ear, being kind. Kindness is so valuable this year. Lots of people are kind of divided about so many different issues. And as we unite in humanity and and help each other, this is going to make all the difference. And, you know, you're able to give what you can. You can give a smile, you can give a listening ear, but then to be able to say, and hey, here's a resource to get food on your table. 
or help you with housing right now. And <laughs> so I think that 211 is just invaluable and I have to share it as much as I can because I believe it will help people out there listening. So keep that 211 in mind. And now I'd like to get into a couple of Dear Sheila's because we are heading into the holidays. Um, I'm going to share a few Dear Sheila's that kind of touch on some situations that might occur during the holidays. So take a listen. Welcome to Dear Sheila, answering real questions with real solutions to help reboot your life. When is it time to buy a new home and live the life I want? I'm sick of settling. Dear Sheila, I have been moving from rental home to apartment to rental home for about five years. Now with COVID, I'm having lots of trouble with my current landlord who comes into my place a few times a week and has removed most of my sense of privacy. The pool and activity room are closed, the gym is shut down, yet my rent remains the same. I feel like I'm stuck. I really want to just buy a house and get out of renting. I found a home that someone is willing to sell at an inflated price and it really doesn't meet what I'm looking for long term. But the owner is offering to carry the loan and I just want to get out of the terrible rental situation I'm in. The current landlord said, They will be willing to let me out of the lease early for a small fee. My question is, should I move out, buy that high-cost house, or stay where I'm miserable? Signed, Homesick. Dear Homesick, This is definitely the year for rebooting and reinventing how we create and invest in our living spaces. Many people have shown up differently during our worldwide crisis. Sometimes emotions have been exaggerated due to financial or outside stress, and this year has brought much more of that into our home life. Continuing to stay stuck in an unhealthy rental situation is not the answer, and overpaying for a home you don't love isn't either. There is a solution to every problem. It sounds like finding your happy place for now will serve you and your family financially and in the long run. Because your landlord is willing to let you out of the lease, now is the time to reinvent your home life. Let's run this situation through the Boots formula. The B in Boots is for being. It is about who you are being and all you are doing and who you need to be during this situation. You are going to have to be really honest about how you and your family choose to invest in the best living space for the short term and the long term. The first O in Boots is for orientation. In order to get the outcomes you desire, you must be brutally honest here. What are your current living expenses? What new homes are available in your price range? And what living space will best serve you and your family? The outcome is happiness now without getting into a home that is overpriced. If you shop around, you may find that you can rent or buy something that fits better for the short term and save for the outcome or the home purchase that you really want in the long run. The next O in the Boots formula is for order of operations. Now that you know who you need to be and your orientation, you can decide in which order you must do things to move out, find a new living space, and give yourself the peace you seek now while you take the necessary steps to build your credit or just take time that you might need to purchase your dream home without the emotion and rush of just getting out of a bad arrangement. In the long run, the order in which you do things is going to really drive your results. The T in the Boots formula is for thinking. This is where your mindset comes in. Stop waiting for the perfect home and decide on a home that honors your current family needs. The reality is that in a few years time, your children will go off to college and your home buying requirements may change. Even though you may continue to rent in the short term, moving to a home that serves your present needs instead of overpaying or staying where you are will make all the difference. The S in the Boots formula is for stepping up. This is the part that puts all of the other pieces you have planned into place and gets you and your home life back into action. 
the time is now for us to collectively work together to rebuild this year. My hope is that this video series and my new book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, helps. In my book and on my website, I provide plenty of free resources for anyone dealing with a rock bottom situation to help them reinvent and reboot their business and personal life. If you have a question for Dear Sheila, message me at www.dearsheila.com. As always, I wish you life, love, laughter, and light. Volume 7. Dear Sheila, I have a father who is an alcoholic as well as a marijuana addict. My dad sometimes acts out or is hateful and mean to my loved ones or me when he is high. I want to be a good daughter and love him through this issue. Yet, I am not sure how to connect with him after he does such cruel things. Do you have any advice on how I should spend time with my dad yet somehow get him to stop that behavior? Addicted to family. Dear Addicted to Family, Dealing with a loved one who has an addiction can be really difficult. The situation is that you're the one that's in control. Believe it or not, it's really hard when someone that you love is addicted and on drugs or alcohol and says really mean things or does things that are hurtful and harmful to you. And then when they're sober, they, they're loving and great people that would never do that to you. So take a step back and think about that. Think about the fact that when, when your dad in this case is in their right mind, when their mind is clear and they're not under the influence of anything, how would your dad want anybody, including himself, to talk to you or treat you or your children or loved ones? And know that that is the boundary and the limit that you need to set with, with your dad. And if that means that you need to take your family away, walk away, or not be in that situation, um, that's what you need to do because you're going to be the one in your right mind that's not under the influence at the time. So that the important part about this is learning how to set really firm, loving yet solid boundaries. And the other thing to do is to make sure that you have every single possible help and resource available for your dad when he does ask for help. Then if your dad's open to that, share with him the different programs and resources out there. I have a whole list of resources in the back of my book as well as on my website that, that you can connect to as a family member with someone with an addiction as well as for your dad to get help on an addiction. And then also if he's not open to that, we're not open to even having a discussion about your boundaries or limits or when you'll walk out. Um, let's say if he starts yelling and cussing at you or your child in a very derogatory way, then you're going to make a promise to yourself as to when you're going to walk away. Now, the other thing is when a person has an addiction like that, usually you're going to know what's a set off, what's a trigger. You're going to kind of start to notice patterns like, okay, the holiday party kind of will set them off and they'll start drinking. Um, so you're going to know when, when the third or fourth drink comes in or they start acting a certain way, it may be time to leave early. Um, it may be that on the game day, that's the day that dad might drink a little bit too much or smoke a little bit too much or whatever he's doing. And so you may decide that on other days, those are the days you're going to visit with your dad or in a public place where he wouldn't have access to alcohol. And that's when you're going to have your relationship with your dad. So you're going to have to take control, take your power back. And as you do that, you're starting to guide your, your dad also. So you're going to lead him um, into some healing as well. And as you set loving boundaries for yourself, it's also showing your children or other loved ones how to honor themselves. I hope this helps 
As always, I wish you life, love, laughter, and light. Welcome to Dear Sheila, answering real questions with real solutions to help reboot your life. Why is it hard to leave an abusive relationship? Dear Sheila, I recently returned again to my very abusive husband. He's verbally abusive, controlling, and now has started to beat me. I feel like I married someone who has two different personalities. I admit I raced into this marriage because we had a child together and my family and friends convinced me to marry. The truth is my husband shows up as the nice guy to my family and friends. Then at home, he's a monster. I'm terrified he may hurt our daughter. I am now tired of hiding the bruises and playing this risky game. My question is, why is it so hard to leave an abusive relationship and how can I safely break these ties and move on? Signed, Boomerang Wife. Dear Boomerang Wife, this is definitely the time for rebooting and reinventing your family life. Whenever things get to the point of violence and abuse, it is time to take massive action. Let's run the situation through the Boots formula. Throughout life, one can find themselves facing a difficult situation that often catches them by surprise. Over the years, I saw the patterns in all the times I've had to reboot and in how I've helped my friends and clients get through a hard time and quickly back into action. Ultimately, I came up with Boots formula. The B in Boots is for being. It is about who you are being and all you are doing and who you need to be during this situation. You are going to have to be really honest and prioritize safety for you and your daughter. This is going to require being strong and asking for help because you truly need it. Who must you be now to make these necessary life shifts? Being honest about the real situation at home is going to make all the difference. The first O in the Boots formula is for orientation. In order to get the outcomes you desire, you must be brutally honest here. How much abuse are you and your daughter facing each day? When did this relationship go from love to fear? What type of outcomes and options do you really desire? Do you wish to divorce or require your spouse to get treatment for this violent behavior? The next O in the Boots formula is for order of operations. Now that you know who you need to be and your orientation, you can decide in which order you must do things. Although we all wish a spouse or other person would show up differently, sometimes it is us who must do the changes. In the long run, the order in which you do things is going to really drive your results. The T in the boots formula is for thinking. This is where your mindset comes in. Stop waiting for your husband to change and start the hard yet necessary actions toward a happier life. Choose to live in a grateful and happy state now and in each step in the process. Be proud of yourself for your strength and surround yourself with a community of other strong moms who want to help. Your daughter will feel this energy and learn how to set boundaries by your actions. The S in the Boots formula is for stepping up. This is the part that puts all the other pieces you have planned into place and gets you and your home life back into action. The time is now for us to collectively work together to rebuild. My hope is that this video series and my new book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, helps. In my book and on my website, I provide plenty of free resources along with an incredible support community for anyone dealing with a rock bottom situation to reinvent and reboot their business and personal life. If you have a question for Dear Sheila, message me at www.sheilamack.com. As always, I wish you life, love, laughter, and love. And now I have some homework for you. I would love for you to grab a copy of my new best-selling book, Bootstraps and Bra Straps, the formula to go from rock bottom back into action in any situation. It is now available on Audible 
as well as on Amazon and Kindle and at www.sheilamack.com. I will be donating a book or course. If you look online, you'll see the courses I offer as well to women's shelters across the United States and Canada whenever a course or book is purchased. So check it out. And I look forward to sharing more with you next time. As always, I wish you life, love, laughter, and light.